Hi, I'm Sean Murray, and this is The Conversation, where we take an alternative look at political events and current affairs through an Irish lens. In this show, we hope to pick, probe, investigate, and uncover the stories that you want to hear. We go where mainstream won't go. This week, we begin our second series on a very different note. Following the Hamas attacks on October 7th and the subsequent Israeli bombardment of Gaza, the Israel-Palestine conflict has now witnessed an unprecedented level of violence. With over 1,200 Israelis killed on October 7th, how do we now define the unparalleled killing of almost 30,000 Palestinians, with over 1,100 of those children? Why did it take events on October 7th to once again train the world's eyes on a conflict that is often reported without historical context? Here to discuss today's topic is Dr. Mark Humphreys from Ireland, Israel and Ants, along with Hamza Zortzis from the Sapiens Institute. But before we speak to our next guests, Let's get a quick overview on this week's topic. So let's introduce today's guests. Mark Humphreys is a lecturer in computing at Dublin City University. He has a Bachelor of Science from University College Dublin and a PhD in Computer Science from the University of Cambridge. His research is in artificial intelligence and has a wide range of interests including politics and genealogy. Hamza Zortzis is the founder and CEO of the Sapiens Institute. He is the author of the best-selling book, The Divine Reality, God, Islam and the Mirage of Atheism and Unveiling Tyranny, the Genocide in Gaza and Falsanist Narratives on Palestine. He is currently completing his PhD on Theological Philosophy. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Now to begin proceedings, I'm going to ask you both to give a rough five minute intro. And Hamza, if we can have you starting. Thank you. Thank you for having us. So I'm going to argue for the case that Israel's war on Gaza is genocide. So I'm going to start with Article 2 of the Genocide Convention of 1948, it provides the following delineation. In the present convention, genocide means any of the following acts committed with intent to destroy, in whole or in part, a national, ethnic, racial or religious group. As such, A, killing members of the group, B, causing serious bodily or mental harm to members of the group, C, deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part, D, imposing measures intended to prevent births within the group, E, forcibly transferring children of the group to another group. So let's prove intent. But before we do that, it's very important to unpack something because Intent doesn't mean that you have to focus on people's statements. If you look at the UN report that was published in 1992, it's called Final Report on the Commission of Experts Established Pursuant to Security Council Resolution. On page 26, under the genocide section, it says, 
In certain cases, there will be evidence of actions or omissions of such a degree that the defendant may reasonably be assumed to have been aware of the consequences of his or her conduct, which goes to the establishment of intent, but not necessarily motive. So from actions, you can infer backwards to intent. We have over a hundred genocidal statements from 30 plus Israeli ministers, politicians, and the IDF, proper evil people. For example, take the Israeli heritage minister, Amichai Eliyahu. He said, Israel must find ways for Gazans that are more painful than death. Take Yoav Gallant, minister of defense. He said, Hamas lost control of the north of the strip. We were doing a Gazan Nakba of 2023. For the audience who don't know, the Nakba was the expulsion of over 700,000 Palestinians and the, the massacre and also the destroying of 600 Palestinian villages. He also says, I have ordered a complete siege on the Gaza Strip. There will be no electricity, no food, no fuel. Everything is closed. We are fighting human animals and we are acting accordingly. Isaac Herzog another evil person, the president. He says, there are no innocent civilians in Gaza. He's blurring the, li the, the lines between a combatant and a non-combatant. What about Benjamin Netanyahu, the prime minister? He said, you must remember what Amalek has done to you, says our Bible. And this refers to 1 Samuel 15, 3 that says, now go attack the Amalekites and, con and totally destroy all that belongs to them. Do not spare them, put to death men and women children and infants, cattle and sheep, camels and donkeys. This is pure genocide, genocidal intent here because he's blurring the, the, the boundaries, if you like, between a combatant and a non-combatant and he's saying kill children. You have Kish, Minister of Education. I relate to them, meaning the Gazans, like Amalek, meaning wipe them out. Nisim Vaturi, Deputy Speaker of the Knesset, says the war will never end if we don't expel them all. Ivy Ditcher, Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development. This is Gaza's Nakba 2003. And there's, so, there's many more. We also have a Zionist think tank that published the blueprint for Palestinian genocide. This think tank is called the Institute for National Security and Zionist Strategy. And it states that it outlines a plan for resettlement and final rehabilitation in Egypt of the entire population of Gaza. The entire population. It was written by... Ahmed Weitzman, who leads the Libertarian Caucus of Israelis, Israel's ruling Likud party. We don't even need these statements. We could look at the war statistics and we could infer backwards, just like what the UN report said. When you look at the statistics of Euromed, which is Swiss-based, it's based in Gaza, you have around 30,000 people that have died. Over 11,000 are children. You have over 56,000 injuries. You have over 100 journalists killed. You have 1.9 million displaced, displaced, and the homes have been destroyed. Over 65,000 homes have been destroyed. You have over 300 damaged schools. You have 183 damaged mosques, damaged churches are three. You have 226 deaths of medical staff and so on and so forth. Now, what's very interesting is this. During the Blitz, okay, the Nazis, when they bombed England, it was over a nine month period intensely, but it really technically was over four years. More people have died in Gaza than they died in London during the Blitz. And the Blitz was like carpet bombing, it wasn't precision strikes, so make that of what you will. What about the US war in Afghanistan? The US dropped more than 7,000 bombs on Afghanistan in both 2018 and 2019. Israel dropped an estimated 6,000 bombs in Gaza in less than a week. Also, even the Americans, American US intelligence assessment has, says, has said that nearly half of the air to ground munitions that Israel has used in Gaza are dumb bombs, meaning they are not guided, it's just Anything goes, anything can be destroyed. And even President Biden, right, Genocide Joe, he said that Israel has engaged in indiscriminate bombing. And this is supported by scholars, genocide scholars. Just eight days after October the 7th, 800 genocide scholars said that what was happening in Gaza was imminent genocide. And I quote, we are compelled to sound the alarm about the possibility of the crime of genocide being perpetrated by Israel, Israeli forces against Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. And finally, you have 48 state 
crime scholars and they said the following. Israel's declared intentions were again clear and explicitly genocidal. Decades of dispossession, occupation, structural violence, forced eviction and apartheid discrimination have followed. We are witnessing now, what we are witnessing now is the denouement of the Israeli state's genocide of the indigenous Palestinians. We are seeing a second Nakba. Now, some people may argue that the IDF and Israel warns the innocent civilians that bombs are coming. They usually give only 15 minutes. And when they leave their homes, they bomb their attempts to evacuate. This is well known with aerial analysis. And this is just really clear that they just want to annihilate everybody. And at the end of the day, I think whoever supports the Israeli regime, what they're doing right now is immoral by definition. Thank you, Hamza. Mark? Well, thanks for having me on. Uh, the, um, uh, there's a lot to unpack there. We're going we're to get through all of those, uh, all of those issues. Uh, so obviously, um, I think the use of the word genocide to describe the war uh, in Gaza is, is, uh, is nonsense. And it's pretty much impossible to define a definition of the word genocide that applies to that war that does not apply to almost every single war uh, in, in human history. So what I want to do is go back to the intent uh, and, and just start with the intent and, and see to where we've come from because I've been speaking about Gaza for some years and written about Gaza and uh, I always had uh, an optimism about Gaza which is that I, w what I want and I think I, uh, I can't speak for uh, Israel but uh, uh, certainly uh, what the average person uh, on my side of the fence wants is we are what we did want anyway until 7th of October uh, was for the Gazans to pursue peace was for the Gazans to pursue prosperity and peace to accept that whatever dreams they had of conquering Jerusalem or getting back to 1948 were not going to happen to accept the border was there between Gaza and Israel to respect the border and make Gaza a wonderful place to be a wonderful place to live uh, to stop the rocket fire, to pursue business, uh, uh, possibly, uh, uh, um, uh, possibly even tourism. You know, Gaza could have been a prosperous little resort uh, on the Mediterranean Sea. Gazans chose a different uh, route, and what I want to do is I just want to look at the point of the 6th of October, because on the 6th of October, Israel had no plans to do anything like this. Israel had no plans uh, for any kind of war. It had no plans to clear anybody out of northern Gaza or Gaza alt altogether. Uh, what Israel wanted was for Gazans to stop, to, to accept that it was an imperfect world, accept this border, and uh, uh, stop the conflict on the border. The West Bank is another problem. You know, the, that's uh, there's no obvious border is the main problem on the, on the West Bank, but there's an obvious border on Gaza. So there could have been peace. There was an imperfect world there on the 6th of October. Um, so it was just another day of deterrence, the 7th of October, as far as Israel is concerned. It knew that uh, uh, the Gazan regime, the Hamas, were you know, basically genocidal racists who would kill every Jew if they could. But it didn't seem that they could ever get that kind of power, that they were deterred, they were contained within Gaza, and uh, that uh, you know, there'd be... Uh, these uh, uh, rounds of war warfare, and um, uh, you know, and then they'd be deterred again for another year or two for another round of rocket fire. So, despite the presence of these uh, 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 genocidal racists uh, who wanted to kill all all Israelis, uh, Israel was reasonably relaxed. It was another year of deterrence uh, that we'll will deter these people. So, what happened on the seventh of October was that entire world ended, and I don't think people ha really understand what has actually happened, okay? It doesn't really matter what I say, it doesn't matter what any of us say. Uh, you have to understand what's changed uh, in Israel, which is that deterrence is gone. Nobody believes in deterrence anymore since the 7th of October. No, nobody believes that Hamas can exist there anymore and can be deterred and people can live near the border uh, and be safe. What Hamas said to Israel, clearer than I think any group has ever said to any other group, in the history of the world, are certainly right up there, is if you want to live, you have to exterminate us, Hamas. As Hamas, as, as a group, if you want to live, if you want to have any life for your children or anything, you have to exterminate us. That's what Hamas said to Israel. 
So that's what Israel is doing. Now, Israel does not want to exterminate the entire Gazan people or the Palestinian people across the West Bank. Um, but Israel has declared that it is going to wipe uh, Hamas uh, off the map. And independent of what you or I think about this, this is, I think, I think it's clear now after a few months, this is what's going to happen. This war is going to carry on all through 2024 until Hamas unconditionally surrenders. And that's actually the only way this ends. So uh, uh, there's no way there's any kind of uh, international court judgments, any kind of expelling of ambassadors, any kind of uh, trade sanctions will make any difference. The only thing that will make any difference is Hamas surrendering and releasing the hostages. There's no, there's no way Israel is going to abandon those hostages. So I think it's a terrible, I'm not saying this is good, right? This is, uh, war is appalling, right? All the innocents, and, and I have no doubt, though I deny it's genocide, absolutely, I have no doubt uh, of the many, many innocents that have, that have been killed, that have been injured, that have, been, that have lost their homes uh, through no fault of their own. Uh, war is horrible. Uh, uh, what happened to the Israelis was obviously horrible. Um, this is not my plan, uh, and uh, my plan was Gazans give up, uh, you know, and I, I even said this in a, in, a, in, a, in a talk, that Gazans abandon the struggle, which is a kind of uh, uh, language that someone engaged in the struggle does not want to hear. Uh, why don't you just abandon the struggle and pursue, pursue peace and prosperity? Because you could have a nice life if you just abandoned your dreams, abandoned, abandoned your struggle and pursued other dreams. So for me, that's what Gazan should have done. It's an absolute tragedy what's happened to Israel, and in particular to Gaza. Hamas have destroyed everything. And I think independent of what we think about it, um, this is going to run. The, 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 only, the only thing I think it, that the only, I hate to provide any hope, really. I used to provide hope. I said it's so easy in Gaza. West Bank is hard because there's no border. Gaza was easy because there was a border. Um, the border, of course, only was defined in 2005, but, you know, when all the Jewish settlers were expelled. But uh, there was a border. So Gaza was easy to solve, and I had optimism. You could just, you could just pursue... I, I used to say, this is a line that drove people... I, I debated Richard Boyd Barrett, he just sneered at this line. I said in two, uh, two years ago, I said, uh, why, why don't Gazans just pursue peace and shopping? Peace, work, shopping, life. And he just sneered at that. He, he regarded it as self-evidently obvious that Gazans had to pursue the struggle. Now, pursuing the struggle has led to this unbelievable disaster. And uh, I don't think it's... I, I, I don't, this, is, this is not my dream for Gazans at, uh, at all. So I know the debate is about genocide, and I, I want to talk about a, few, a, a bunch of related topics. So, but I wanted to start with the idea that none of this was Israel's idea uh, from the word go. Um, I will, I do plan to talk about what Hamza said, uh, uh, you know, we, we'll get into debating that, whether the, the military campaign is a genocide. But I just wanted to start by saying that none of this was, was a plan, either, by, either from me or from, or from Israel uh, on the 6th of October. Okay, Hamza, just pick it up on, on, on one point. Peace, shopping, life. Yes. What have you to say to that? I, I don't believe he's an Irishman. I mean, we need to do a DNA test or we need to check his passport or I heard his wife is not Irish. Maybe she's infected him in some way. Is she English? You believe in struggle? No, struggle. I, I, I believe that, that, that you should have morality. And what's very interesting, uh, let me sure. ask you a question. 7th of October. Why, why, why are you racist? Oh let, no. let me tell you, no, let me tell you asking that no, question. No, is because let's keep it civil. No, 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 let me, let me, let's let me, let me, let me no, it is civil. I'm not being angry. I'm just, be, um, you are a classic atheist. Let me tell you why. Sorry, classic racist. And you're a classic <laughs> atheist as well. Freudian slip. Freudian slip, it? but he's an atheist are as well. Are all atheists racist? Of course not. So, but, but why are you racist? Because you're talking about October the 6th. Where is your condemnation of the equivalent five October the 7th that were inflicted on the Palestinians from 2008 to 2020? Where is your condemnation of that? You talk about October the 6th as if everything was rosy and peaceful. Israel has an apartheid system that around 65 laws, no more than, no less than 65 laws that discriminate against Arab Israelis and the Palestinians. You have illegal occupation. Well, maybe sick you, you, you have killing... No, let's talk about Gaza and the whole of Israel because this is about Israel's 
disgraceful Zionism. You're not saying nothing about what happened before October the 7th with regards to its reality. Where is your condemnation of the equivalent of 5 October the 7th since 2008? Where is your condemnation? Why the more asymmetry? Is it because you're racist? Well, no, that's kind of ridiculous. Okay. Or, ignor or ignorant. Okay. Or ignorant. Okay. Okay. Hamza, let, let, it's let either, it's like you're either racist or ignorant. Okay, let, let Mark no, answer I'm, I'm a bit disappointed in you. That's I, fine. I, 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 I thought... I don't mind. I, I thought you were more civil debate. This is civil. No, I'm being, I'm being, this is no, an intellectual really. position. Not really. I'm giving, anyway. You're either we, ignorant uh, or you're let racist. Mark, let Mark make his point no, there, please. No, no. Uh, well, Hamza actually has been a lot more civilized than some of the online things I've seen him in. So anyway, let's, let's cool it down a minute. First of all, it's a bit of a step to say that uh, if I don't uh, take your view of the Israeli conflict from 1948 to uh, 2023 that I'm a racist. Uh, I, I, may I didn't say that. Uh, well, I may take a different view to what, to what happened in, in the conflict. So, so you said, where is your condemnation of all the o October the 7th, etc.? Now, the point is, the, the conflict is very, is very big. We, we all agree on that. There's, there's a huge amount to read, there's a huge amount to think about, to learn about. Uh, I mean, even starting in 1947, you could argue, is, is slightly too late. But, you know, should we talk about the Hebron massacre? Should we, you know, should we go further back? Uh, but um, there's an enormous amount to read uh, and, and think and consider, uh, uh, similar to, to, to perhaps most conflicts in the world. Uh, the current flare-up, obviously, starts on October the 7th, but it's obviously part of a 75-year uh, conflict. Now, my point about October the 6th is, on October the 6th, especially in Gaza, uh, there are there is still a chance of a, of a better life. That chance is gone now. So you're not going to condemn the equivalent of October, uh, October the 7th? Well, on, Hansa, just let, let I need to answer. answer first. On, on October the 6th, uh, there is a chance of a better life. Israel still exists. The West Bank problems aren't solved. So I'm asking the Gazans to park that, park their West Bank, uh, the problems of the West Bank brothers, if you like, and take a look at Gaza, right? There's no occupation. The Jews have been, have been gone. For Gaza is occupied by international for, law. For 18 years. This is wrong. Hold on, hold on. The Jews were all kicked out uh, uh, in 2005. They're gone from Gaza for 18 years. Um, there, the Israel uh, uh, is maintaining uh, some control, uh, obviously over the borders, because October the 7th showed. And their food. Hold, hold on. October the 7th showed why uh, uh, Israel was maintaining a hard border with Gaza. However, tens of thousands of Gazans, not quite sure the number is it 30,000 Gazans had work permits to come into Israel. They were vetish, that they weren't terrorists, they weren't Hamas. They had work permits to come into uh, to Israel to work, uh, and they'd come into Israel and work and go back to Gaza. Right, that's all gone now. Uh, Gazans, the wealthier Gazans, were going. You're not home. answering my question. This Hold is on, a, the it's a red herring. I'm talking about the sixth of October. The wealthier Gazans would uh, go on holiday to Dubai, to Turkey, and come back to Gaza. It wasn't a prison. Are you they answering your question? Hold on. Your question is. Why could they not, uh, you know, the, the, your question is it's impossible for them to accept the world of 6th of October, right? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying you're talking about October, you're framing, it's a misframing. You're framing October the 6th I think, as if everything is fine. But from at least 2008 onwards, there have been equivalent of five October the 7th, and you've said nothing about that. I, so I, so I'm, I'm in a morally and epistemically justified, justified position to say that you're either ignorant or racist because you have a moral asymmetry. Well, it's a moral asymmetry. No. Children have died. Innocent people have been killed equivalent to 5 October the 7th is 2008. Okay. And, and, and this omission, which is a typical Zionist strategy, by the way. It's not the mission. I've it talked is an omission. Length. You, know, you haven't. Well, you did today. it now because you, you're not even addressing it. No, so but the I point will. is, but let's go back to the normal point. The question is about genocide. We talked about the definition of genocide. We have shown intent. So what are you going to say about the genocidal language of the prime minister, of the president, of key members of the ruling party, of think tanks that influence the ruling party, genocidal statements. I'll, I'll, let me give you a thought experiment. If genocide Joe, Joe Biden, if any politician in the West said those statements, the whole world would be on fire. But the minute your Zionist friends have said something 
oh, you know, let's, it's poetry, or let's do some metaphorical linguistic analysis. I find it immoral that you can't even talk about these explicit genocidal statements. Um, I, I don't make those kind of genocidal statements are, are statements that could potentially but you be support a, you support an entity as, that does as, as genocidal you support a genocidal entity i i, I don't like the uh outrageous statements like talking about the amalekites uh, in in the in the is uh, it outrageous or genocidal which one is it well the, the outrageous is like maybe calling someone it, a racist right but to say <laughs> genocide is a different issue right is it just the, outrageous or is it genocidal so, look here here's the thing is right? it a genocidal statement I think some you. of those statements are... So uh, the intent uh, is there? No, some, hold on. Some of those statements are, I in terms of rhetoric, are, you know, uh, do... Te do. But doesn't the so-called rhetoric... It uh, is. Isn't that backed up by what's been happening on the ground? That's my point, right? So my point is that after the most traumatic event, I mean, I presume you will agree, right? Let's, let's see if you'll agree with one thing. I presume you'll agree that... October the 7th was the most traumatic event, uh, not just for Israel, but for Jews since Adolf Hitler, since the Holocaust. Well, I am under no moral or epistemic obligation to believe Zionists because I have a list of 10 lies backed by academics from the Zionist entity. I'm a moral human being. I'm an intellectual. I'm a PhD Sorry, student. I'm Let me finish. I'm just talking yeah, about its I, impact. Yeah, I'm answering, I'm its answering impact a question. On Israelis. Well, the impact could be because of propaganda. The point I'm trying to say is this, the moral agents are under no moral or epistemic obligation to believe known liars. And they're known liars. They have the false flag in Egypt, uh, pretending to blame it on the, the Ikhwan, the Muslim Brotherhood. You had so, so the Zionists okay. who had Irish passports that killed someone in in, in Dubai. Someone, he was a Hamas leader. Yeah, whatever, Hoover is a human being at the end of the day. But the point I'm trying to say is... Um, You're saying Mossad has no right to kill Hamas leaders. No, I'm saying to you that they're known liars. There are known liars. Okay, so just, you, just okay, hands up. 40 beheaded babies. Uh, okay. Name well, me one of the babies that were beheaded. One, well, just one. Well, there, 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 uh, some children were... Uh, name some, me one beheaded baby. Some women and children were beheaded. Name me one baby. Uh, maybe, name me the, the name. Maybe not 40, that was one... That was one misreporting. Oh, misreporting! It wasn't propaganda or uh, lies or anything. There was a lot of there was a lot of misreporting. What about the IDF who said that basically yeah. it was our own people that killed some of them as no, well? That's, Sorry, guys. I'm, that's I'm a just conspiracy wanna, I'm just theory. I'm just going to interrupt for a second. So no, it Mark, was, Mark, it was it's their own mouth. Back to you, they Mark, said it themselves. Mark, Mark just made a statement, and I just just to address Mark's point. Uh, do you see Mark had asked? Do you see the impact that it's had on Jews? Of course, I do. I'm, I look. I, I I consider myself empathic. The the impact it has had, of course, is going to be traumatic if that's how they perceive things. I'm not denying the impact, whether it's propaganda or not. So I do empathize from that perspective. But at the end of the day, I already said there's been five equivalent in October the 7th since 2008 from a numbers perspective, from killing innocent human beings, from killing Palestinians. Why the moral asymmetry? Why do you believe Israeli blood is, more wor is worth more than Palestinian blood? Because you haven't even, you're not even bothered to address. No, you, hold on, you're not hold even on. bothered to address that reality. There are five equivalent October the seventh inflicted on the Palestinians before October the seventh. You're, you're talking. Uh, no, no. First of all, you're just, talking. Just be honest. You don't care about Palestinians. No, first, I just care. You don't care. What, what I want for Palestinians. You're racist right? or ignorant. One of those. What two. I want for Palestinians. You want them to be impressed, and you want them no, to respond no, to the oppression no, no. in the way that you want. No, no. I've been, I've been, I've been clear. I've been clear my whole life. What I want for Palestinians is I want them to live in peace and prosperity. Okay. And for Stop me, the hold apartheid. On, hold, on, hold on, for me... Illegal occupations. Hold, hold on, for me, the things that... The, the, the fundamental thing that is stopping Palestinians and has been stopping them since before they were called Palestinians, which uh, 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 they, uh, a name that emerged in the 60s... Uh, That's but, not true. Uh, okay, we'll... Anyway... What the, f the, the thing that is stopping Palestinians from living in peace and prosperity is their own ideas. The ideas that are in their heads. Now, that makes this potentially... Do you know on, the opinions, on, the whole of the let Palestinians? Me, you know all of the ideas? Yeah, let, let, me, let, no, me, let, 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 let me just try and make the point. Which is, in some conflicts in the world, uh, you just have to fight. You have to keep up the struggle. You have no chance at all. You're being brutalised by some neighbouring dictator. Uh, uh, the struggle is 
you know, perhaps decimating your country, but if you give up the struggle, you'll, you'll just be decimated even more by the, by the dictator or whatever. There are, there are many, perhaps most wars in history are like that. You just have to fight whoever, whoever is up against you. Um, the Israel war, it stri it, it, I, I believe, is not and never has been like that. The, the war between Israel and the Arabs and then Israel and the Palestinians uh, is a war where if the Palestinians modified their ideas, everybody could live in peace and prosperity. And it's harder to see in the West Bank where there's no agreed definition of territory. It was unbelievably easy to see in Gaza from 2005 to 2023. All the Gazans had to do was stop and they had a solution. It was right there waiting for them for 18 years, but they wouldn't take it. Instead, they wanted to continue the war. They fired rockets at Israel, which inevitably brought Israel back to uh, uh, to attack Hamas, to do aerial bombing, because sending in troops on the ground means dead Israelis, so they did aerial bombing. Uh, they did send in troops, I've met some of the troops who went in on the ground, uh, but they very few went in until uh, 2023. Because they're cowards, that's why. Well, because, well, that's first why they wear nappies. Hold on, yeah, c no, calm, <laughs> right, first of all. I am calm, I said they wear nappies, it's a fact. For, first of all, um, if they go in on the ground, they die, right? Uh, any troops that go in the ground die. But also combat on the ground is also very dangerous for local civilians. Yeah. They die as well too. It just escalates. So, so how does this actually so pr present a case again? You've mentioned some, uh, uh, some untruths there, but no, how I'm does this go against my presentation? Well, We've shown intent and we've shown the no, actions there's, that there's support no, the intent. There's no intent. There's Look, no intent? No, there's they no said intent. They said ministers, people of positions of power, we have over 100 statements, including the IDF, a general, okay. the people of significant power, think tanks, having genocidal statements, and the dumb bombs, around 50% of, of, of the bombs okay. are not even laser guided, right? Just to annihilate everything. Okay, well, let me, let me say so a few th things. That's right? not genocide? Okay, Hamza, let, let, let Mark just... Let me say a few things to the core of it, right? I don't agree with statements talking about Amalekites and stuff like that. I understand anger uh, and hurt and fury uh, uh, on the Israeli side. I mean, I can feel it and I'm not uh, Israeli. Mm -hmm. uh, I can understand that anger, but I don't agree with Amalekite-type statements or anything like that. So the, 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 what you have to look at is what's actually happening. Right. So what's actually happening compared to those statements. So, for example, one of, one of the first things that that uh, that uh, that happened was an announcement for civilians to get out. I've already mentioned that. Northern Northern Gaza. Right. And get into southern Gaza. And then you just bomb and when they're evacuating. You kill them when they're evacuating. Not, that's not what happened. Aerial analysis has proven that. That's, go that, to The Guardian, go to other independent no, uh, news uh, entities. That, that's, not, that's not independent. Now, there's, there, there was one... Also, you're independent, are you? No, 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 none of us, perhaps. So what have you cited that is even independent? So, so, hold on, hold on. The, so if the, no one's independent, your argument is false then. Hold on. It's a moot point, the, right? The, 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 uh, uh, the, the, uh, the evacuation of northern Gaza was not done so that everyone could get onto the road and then they could all be bombed, right? The, how the, do you know? How do you know? Because the, they were bombed, so how do you know? Hold on, hold on. The, the Let's talk about what happened. Sorry, I'm going to cut across this, guys. I'm going to cut across this because I think it's How can you how can we tolerate these lies and this me. propaganda? Hamza, you give Mark. Goebbels a run for his money. Hamza, Mark. We're, 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 going, up, we're going around in circles here. We're going around in circles. Position is Mark. It was Hamas men who were bombed on the road, and very few. Who's of our? Who's Mark, our position? Mark. Well, they, I'm going to cut across you guys. Guys, you have to listen at. to me here. You have to listen to me here. Yeah. Just on that point, I mean, we've given we've given the figures for which Euro uh, Med have given the Swiss uh, monitoring group, and they have given the figures of almost thirty thousand uh, Palestinians killed. Now, to to go back to that point, uh, the bombing of northern Gaza. How can it be said that it was precision bombing when there were that many civilians killed? I just want to I just want to get to the core of that. Do you believe that's just collateral damage, or do the well, Israelis just believe that's collateral damage, or, or how do we square that circle? Okay, so Israel set itself the job of destroying the uh, destroying a group uh, that controls all of Gaza, essentially Hamas. So so it's an unbelievably uh, ambitious. Uh, job, which it has never attempted before, to take an entire territory and wipe out the uh, the uh, militant terrorist uh, group that's uh, that's in charge of it. Now, the uh, probably every fact I say Hamza is going to challenge, but 
uh, you're providing uh, no citations, no evidence, but, nothing. But, but it's, it's no, Gaza, Gaza North and South uh, is um, uh, Gaza North and South is is practically an armed camp in the sense that the the uh, uh, there's a tunnel system of several hundred kilometers. You presumably you agree that exists. The tunnel system is going underneath apartment blocks, it's going underneath mosques. They found openings to the tunnels in, in mosques, in schools, in, in private houses. There was a, a report there that uh, the IDF said that every single mosque they had searched so far on the ground and every single school that they had searched on the ground had either weapons uh, or uh, a tunnel underneath it. Now, you may not believe any of this, uh, I certainly believe that's true because that is the way uh, Hamas would fight. It, it, it is the kind of morality that Hamas would believe in. The tactics that they would use when up against those tactics wouldn't be of any use against Assad or Putin, right? They wouldn't give it. They wouldn't care less if your tunnel is under a mosque or a school with classes on. Uh, Assad or Putin don't care about that stuff. But they use those tactics because they know they've some chance that those tactics will help uh, against Israel. So it's an incredibly hard uh, 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 job to, to clear out uh, uh, Gaza, which is why they've started doing it sector by sector. They wanted to move the population uh, uh, down to the south. Now they're dropping leaflets. They've divided the south up into zones. There's a guy, uh, Mohammed Smiri, I think is his name anyway. He's, he's one of these uh, uh, Gaza um, journalists and he posts the leaflets that are being dropped from the sky. Now, this is a guy who hates Israel, uh, but the leaflets, and he, he, he posts uh, uh, online what leaflets he's got from the sky, and the leaflets are saying things like, uh, here in this red sector, we are going to be, uh, there's going to be fighting and bombing in this red sector today. Move along this road into these green sectors. So, now, it's not very nice for people who live there to be told with a message from the, the enemy from the sky, get out of your house and you may never see it again, move down the road. But why are they doing this, is the point, if their aim is genocide? And show me any army that would do this in the, in the history of the world. Show me any Muslim army no, no, that uh, would ever do I'm has sorry, Muslim, what's, what's, what's Muslim, any Muslim what, what army Muslims ever done got it? to do with this? What, what has Islam got to do with would this? Ham would Hamas do it? What's, what's Muslim got to do with this? No. Well, would, cause what has Muslim got to do with it right now? Palestinians are Christian as well. What has Muslim got to do with it right now? Okay, show me any Palestinian... Uh, uh, our Arab, show me any Arab army that would drop leaflets from the sky warning people as to what sector they're, they're But this is this is a red herring, this is totally irrelevant. The funny why is are I'm they doing I, it? Okay, so no, you, you why, why would the Gazans it? believe the IDF when why the IDF know? have told them to move and when they've moved they've been bombed? They haven't bombed them. They, they have, bombed, the error no. analysis has been shown by independent no, they, entities. They bombed they, Hamas no, fighters. No, they have, well, women, children, they bombed, children? They bombed. Uh, is a child a Hamas fighter? Well, well is uh, a child a Hamas fighter? Well, if you were saying... Are, are 11,000 children well, Hamas fighters? Uh, uh, well, hold on. It's we're, genocidal language, we're, we're dehumanizing to, language. Are children fighting for Hamas? Are children Hamas no, by, fighters? By definition. And are they, are if, they, are they if, guilty? If we know, Should they be bombed? Hold on. Should we kill we, children? Is that we, what you believe? If we know nothing other than it's a child, then they're not a Hamas fighter. If they're under 10 years old, they're not a Hamas fighter. If they're over 10 years old, are over 10 year olds being used by Hamas? Because I've seen plenty of evidence that they are. As spotters, as runners, as carriers of ammunition. So basically that language is basically blurring the boundary between a combatant and a non-combatant. It's not language, I'm talking about what you're Hamas basic, are doing. So you're basically saying it's okay, because of that we should kill everybody, is that what you're saying? Well, if I was saying that, wouldn't I say it rather than well, you? Well, I don't to know. You've said a lot of you, things you, without you, any basis. Rather than you having to say, oh, so look, you're saying you, just you know, you look, let's, let's think about your framing. This yeah. is very important. The but way you're framing it as if there are two state actors that are fighting each other. This is, this is an, it's actually, it's not symmetrical. There's an asymmetry. When you're talking about Gaza that was left alone in 2005, it's, it's still known under international law as an occupied uh, territory. Secondly, they control even the daily calories. Academics have called right. it perverse, degrading, and unlivable in many places. So from that perspective, the way you're framing it, you're framing it as if there are two state actors and there's a war. It's not a war. 
In, in actual fact, Israel, uh, under international law, has no right to defend itself. Why? Because it's already in Israel a... Israel has no right to let defend let me, itself. Yeah, according to international law. Let me explain so why. So after 7th of October, Can I explain Israel why? should do nothing. I'm not saying that. Listen to what well, I'm what saying. What should Israel do then? Listen to, they should stop the apartheid regime. They should stop the illegal settlements. They should stop uh, oppressing the Palestinians. They should stop killing children. They should stop forcing and imprisoning children. The list goes on and on and on. That's what they should do. You want peace? Don't be an oppressor. Uh, if you want priests, don't have apartheid. Uh, there are 65 how, how laws that discriminate against Arab, Israelis, and we're, Palestinians. We're on to a new are you happy with apartheid? We're on, to, we're on to a new topic every two seconds. Are you seconds. happy with apartheid? Hold on. My problem with Sounds this, like it. My problem with this debate is there's a new topic every two seconds. You're not seconds. directly answering my questions. That's no, why. I, well, I, that, I that, that marks big I think we ought to dig into some topics and go a bit slower. I, I'm happy to discuss all these topics, by the way, but a new topic every two seconds is a bit hard to cope with. No, because I'm just challenging you. Well, I think we need, to we, yeah. we need to stick with the, the, the topic. You're ch I'm challenging the is, misframing. We need to stick to the topic with which the, the, the reasons why you're here. I think we need to stick that. So go ahead, Mark. Make your which point. Is, so, so look, uh, uh, the, there's about 100 trucks a day going into uh, in aid going into uh, in food. Without answering the question. Uh, hold on. Going into Gaza right now. The, the, the issue, sorry, if we're back to the issue of genocidal intent. Well, the question is, why are these leaflets being dropped from the sky? Not just that, but phone calls as well. There's been uh, several million text messages, uh, many thousands of phone calls, because they, they're much more human intensive. Uh, there are um, uh, accounts from Gazans. Uh, one, uh, one of them was the caretaker of an apartment block. He said, Israelis were on the phone with him for two hours explaining who they were attacking, when, why his people had to get out of the apartment block and when it was safe to go back. Now, my point is not that absolutely everything Israel ever does in a war is going to be perfect and there, that it can be justified. Uh, that, that wouldn't be true for any war in, in human history. People make errors and people get enthusiastic, and people misidentify and people do commit crimes as well. But my point is that there are too many things that don't fit in with your simple claim that Israel just wants to kill everybody. And we start off with all the warnings. No, I didn't actually say that. I oh, said genocide that genocide is, is killing, every, killing everyone in the territory. No, right? but look, well, like, for example, you, you, be, you believe in the Armenian genocide, right? You believe that well, the Ottomans committed an Armenian genocide. Is that true? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. But I, I, I don't think we should talk about that. No, for I'm not saying that. 10 but minutes no, but, so saying, no, but I want to show yeah. your maybe inconsistent principles here because there is no proof of intent for genocide there, yet you believe it's a genocide. Also, the, the other Armenians towards the east were untouched. So a genocide doesn't mean, even according to your own perspective... At the risk of discussing it, they drove them all into the desert yeah, to but starve you're, you're, to death. Mi you're missing the point, though. They, you're, 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 but they want to drive the Gazans, and they've Jesus. been starving yeah. the Gazans, yeah, let's, too. Let's I'm, just showing, yeah, but I'm showing the inconsistency, because it's related to the point. It's you about know, genocide. Ga you believe in a genocide, but you can't prove intent of a genocide. You know Gazans are some of the most obese people in the Middle East. You, you're not listening to what I'm saying. Well, they're not being starved. L listen to me. You cl no, you the, claim the, diminished because no, they're being starved. No, no. They have an obesity problem. No, I'm saying that there is control there is controlled, um, um, there's control of the food, the water and the electricity. That is not an independent entity, entity, that's my point. And yes, they were starved during this campaign. Whether obese or not is, is a red herring. The point is you have an entity, the Gaza Strip, that, that the Israelis have full control over the water, the electricity and the food to the degree that they said there can be only a, this many calories per day, according to academics. So my point here is, how is that, how is that now a, 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 an independent state and your framing of that there is like, you know, a symmetrical war going on? Well, well how come... And, how and come, that's my point. So my point how is... Come, how come before 2023, if Israel was so evil, they were prov providing electricity and water to Gaza? How come? Well, yeah. If they're so evil. Yeah, but they were controlling it. But if they're so evil, why didn't they just cut it off? Before 2023. Well, wait, hold on a second. They so, were providing so, electricity so, so and one, water to yeah, Gaza. Yeah, but if Gaza had its own... And that just proves my point. So you, you, you've you actually proved my point, which is Gaza doesn't have control. Gaza, if Gaza, Israel's providing Gaza, water, of, electricity... Of course, that means of course, Gaza doesn't have control. Of Gaza, so how can they flourish when they don't have control? Gaza before... 
hold on. Gaza before 2023, of course it didn't have full control of its own territory. I never claimed it did. What I claimed was that there was a route for them to peace, prosperity. For example, Israel was yeah, but they're occupied. Hold on, hold on. They're Israel occupied. Wa- hold on. It, they weren't occupied. Israel, no, it, no, international is, law, Gaza is considered yeah, an occupied hold, hold entity on. even post-2005. Hold on. I, Israel... Do you uh, believe in international uh, law? Just not a new topic. <laughs> yeah, but it's not a new topic. Make you're you're making a make statement that's point. just making make things up. Uh, as I say, Hamza, it's a new topic every two seconds. We, no, we, it's related, we, actually. Uh, they are related, but yes. we'd be, yeah, let's, just make let's spend a bit of time in a topic and then go yeah, on sure, to the next sure, one. Right? Sure, sure. Before uh, 2023, uh, Israel was providing electricity, say, to, to, to Gaza. Uh, Hamas fired rockets at the power station that was providing electricity to Gaza, right? Can anyone explain? I mean, obviously, I can explain that because I understand what Hamas is and what they do. That's why I understand how they fight. I think Israelis understand what Hamas is too, and they understand that's why they're using 10-year-olds and 12-year-olds to, to run around as, as spotters. There was an example there recently where, um, uh, just last week, uh, where uh, kids on bikes, about age 13, emerged in the middle of an apparent combat zone uh, in Gaza, a very dangerous place that all civilians have been warned repeatedly to get out of. Uh, you know, this is the kind of situation in which those hostages got shot by accident because it's lethally dangerous. There's, there's combat and all of a sudden there's these kids on bikes and the, uh, uh, the IDF patrol said, get out of here, get out of here, it's not safe, get out, you know, go, go, go down the road, uh, get, you know, get, Go 10 blocks down the road. It's not safe here, you know? Anyway, the kids went back into some building or whatever, and the next thing the patrol was hit with, uh, I think it was RPG fire, and two uh, IDF soldiers were killed in that engagement, and they were killed because they would not kill the reconnaissance guys who were the three kids, right? Now, you may say, and I may say, that that's great that they didn't kill those kids because they just found them. No, they kill, they kill kids all the time. Hold on a minute. But those kids were the reconnaissance guys in that situation, so they gave their lives not to kill those kids. Yeah. Now, if, if that's saying, true, it's an exception I, because it's uh, not an exception. around 123, it's how fights. Around 123 how children fights. were killed. Well, 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 recently, they were just shot hold, hold in the on. back. What, hold on. What I'm saying is that fighting an enemy like Hamas is unbelievably difficult. No, but you're framing it. Okay, let me explain why this framing is all wrong. Number one, I said, I want to justify the point I mentioned earlier. This is international law. According to uh, valid interpretations of international law, Israel is already in an aggressive position because it's an illegal occupier. And by virtue of that, they have no right. The, the idea I have a right to defend myself is, well, you're already in aggressive stance, right? So therefore, they're in, a, in a, an aggressive posture. So, and from that perspective, legally, they have no right. Now, you could talk about the moral question, that's fine. But legally, they don't have any right to defend themselves because they're an illegal occupier. And you're just framing as it's just Hamas. Notwithstanding Hamas and the Islamic Jihad, their proscribed terrorist groups, according to the United Kingdom, there are other factions within the resistance that are legal and they're using the international right, according to, according to the Geneva Convention and, and uh, international law, to actually resist an occupying force. They're what? actually allowed to resist an occupying force. Uh, no, so my point is, my, the way you... Not my universe. So, um, not the, in your universe. No, this is international law. Yeah, look... I'll tell you what. Look. Yeah, what? Is it international law? Or are you allowed to resist an occupying force? Here, here's, here's a question. Gas is not occupied. It, well, uh, it is it occupied. Is <laughs> no, no, no. It is look, occupied. Ga- According Gaza, to international Gaza, law, even our, because, it, because Israel had control of resources. Gaza is going to be occupied now for decades. Listen, this is rhetoric. Listen, no, it's not rhetoric, uh, it's according, according to international law, even, beca- uh, even notwithstanding the fact that the Israeli settlers left, illegal settlers, may I add, uh, because Israel had control of the population uh, to, 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 a, in, to a degree, electricity, water, and so on and so forth, it's still considered as an occupied force according to international law. So you can't say it's not occupied because it's still considered occupied. This is why there is a resistance movement. This is why there are valid well, legal it's factions. It's not why there's a resistance movement. There, of course there is. It's not no, just Hamas not. and Islamic Jihad. There are other factions that are trying to resist the Ga- occupier. Gazan's issues since 2005 are all self-inflicted. What Gazans could have done was they could have chosen a different path after 2005. They could have said, well, our brothers in the West Bank can deal with their own lives. We're going to pursue our life here. There's a border 
and that's the so way. So let's stay occupied, right? Let's just stay they're occupied. Not, they got rid of the Jews. I don't believe you're you're Irish, honestly. They, they, we, we need to check guys, your on passport. We're going to take a break. The, the, the we need guys, to check your passport. Guys, on that, we're just going to take a break. You're still tuned into the conversation, your weekly alternative probe of political events and current affairs around Ireland. I'm joined by our special guests, Dr. Mark Humphreys from Ireland Israel Alliance, along with Hamza Tortsis from the Sapient Institute. Okay, guys, so in all that's been said, uh, and to conclude, how do we see, how do we now see, and I'm going to ask you first, Mark, how do we now see the two-state solution and how do we move forward? Okay, um, I think the two-state solution is dead as a dodo at the moment. Um, I say at the moment, the dodo is not coming back. But dead as a dodo probably for the next couple of decades. Uh, it was already in severe trouble um, in, in um, the uh, uh, Second Intifada. I think the Second Intifada really killed off the idea. The idea of a two-state solution is that some border could be agreed, that Israel would exist and some Palestinian state would exist, and that by doing that, by defining borders, there would be less war, not more war. Now, Israelis fundamentally now believe that any such border, no matter what it was, would lead to more war would lead to a horrific war. So let's say some deal was agreed and some Israeli government was stupid enough to sign up to it uh, for some border on the West Bank and maybe some settlements were kept and some were closed uh, and there's some border. The problem is most Israelis, I think, uh, would now feel that that would be another Gaza, that then heavy weapons would be brought in, perhaps artillery into the West Bank, Rockets would be coming through 24-7 and everybody would be, all the, all the uh, terrorists and jihadists would be gathering in the West Bank for the final destruction, the final war to destroy Israel. It would be Gaza times, times 10. Gaza was a trial run for the two-state the two state solution. It was, it was a trial run. Gazans could have ignored Israel. They could have lived in peace and prosperity. They could have enjoyed their lives. They rejected that and uh, Palestinians of the West Bank would probably reject it too. So um, uh, the two-state solution is dead. Um, what, uh, what happens now, uh, nobody really knows. I, I had optimism before, not much optimism, but at least a bit, before 7th of October. I have no optimism now. Um, I had a plan that could be followed, uh, that I believed in, and I think many Israeli people did, or pro-Israeli people. But I don't think we do know. I, d I don't think Israel knows what it's going to do when it, if and probably when uh, later this year it actually destroys Hamas. Um, it's not going to solve its problems on the northern border and the West Bank. It's going to lead to a whole load of new problems in Gaza. You know, are they going to be able to stop a new terrorist group uh, taken over, maybe rebrand it? Uh, uh, so I don't think Israel has some kind of answer as to what it's doing. What, it, what Israel has is it's an absolute shock that Hamas was able to do this attack on the 7th of October. It's absolutely determined that Hamas will now no longer exist, except maybe in a hotel in Qatar. Uh, uh, but it will no longer exist in Gaza. And as I think I said earlier, <laughs> whatever we say, that's, that's really its plan. But I'm afraid I've no hope really to bring. Uh, the, the only hope in this conflict, which I did mention earlier on, is that Palestinians change their ideas about the future and about what they want. Um, but unfortunately, I really see almost no sign of that. And I see almost no sign that their allies, uh, like, like Hamza, in, in their allies in the West and around the world, are even interested in getting them to do that. So, uh, so I'm afraid there's nothing I can say. The, the, the problem can be easily solved if Palestinians decide we'll just compromise, we'll lose some of our territory, we'll have some kind of state, we'll live in peace. Uh, war with the Jews was a bad idea. We, we'll put it all behind us like Germans in the 1950s. But there's no sign of that happening. Maybe it'll happen among the Gazans. That could be the only possible thing. Maybe after the terrible loss uh, of their war, that they'll be like Germans in the 1950s and they won't want to, to pursue the struggle anymore. 
uh, in, in 2025 going forward. But that's a tiny little crumb of hope. I've, I've, I'm afraid I've no hope to give you, I think. Hamza? Yeah, so it's interesting that we have othering language, which leads to dehumanization, and dehumanization leads to genocide. The Palestinians change the ideas, as if we know all of the ideas of the Muslim Christian Palestinians, the kind of othering that is happening in your language, and also the subtlety between war against Israel, now war against the Jews, is these subtleties, these kind of propaganda techniques, which are quite, in, in, in fact, quite devilish. I know you're an atheist, so don't take it personally, because you don't believe in the devil. But the point is, it's a devilish ploy, because it is well known that the Palestinians, Muslims as well, in general, have never wanted to fight the Jews. In actual fact, Islam preserved the Jewish community. Philip Mansell's book, Constantinople, has a primary source of a Jewish rabbi that was expelled from Spain because of the Inquisition. He said, come to the land of the Turks, rich are the fruits of the earth, we live in peace and freedom. Amnon Cohen, a Jewish historian, he's got a book called World Within. It's a two volume book. He collects 1000 records of the judicial records, the sigil records. And he concludes that although the Jews had the freedom to go to the rabbinical courts, the majority of them or a substantial number of them wanted to go to the Qadi, the Islamic judge, because the new justice lived under the Islamic principles. He even goes to the Manushai and he says women would complain of nafaka, meaning maintenance of, 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 uh, from their husband to the Islamic judge. And I could go on and on and on. Zion Zohar, you could talk about jihad. True jihad is liberation of people. Zain Zohar, another Jewish historian, he talks about the Iberian Peninsula. He says, thus, when the Muslims crossed the Straits of Gibraltar in the Iberian Peninsula, the Jews saw the Muslims as liberators from Christian persecution. And if you look at the treaty of the Prophet Muhammad upon him, he peace himself, he had a treaty with the Jews, with the Jewish tribes, and he said they should not be harmed, and they, they act as one body. This is unprecedented in history. We're not fighting the Jews, we're fighting Zionism. Our job is to take care of all human beings, to give them dignity, and that's extremely important. And I don't like this othering language about the Palestinians and the ideas. Have you got a survey that knows about the ideas of the all of the Palestinians? Yes. This is, no, you don't. All of, all of the Palestinians, really? Surveys don't even have that, those type of numbers. This is ridiculous. But the point I want to say is this, if you want peace, they don't have apartheid. You can never have, haven't we learned from South Africa? South Africa had to dismantle the apartheid state in order for peace to exist. You cannot have peace with injustice. You cannot have harmony with injustice. You cannot have peace with apartheid. There are at least 65 laws documented that discriminate against Arab Israelis and Palestinians. It is an apartheid system, well established with many NG by many NGOs like Human Rights Watch, Amnesty International, and others of ideological bent. And also there is a database an uh, Adala database that looks at all of these laws and shows how they are discriminatory. So remove the apartheid system. Number two, stop illegally occupying someone else's land. Stop growing this, this, the settlements. For example, the academic Glenn E. Robinson in The Death of the Two-State Solution, Israel, the Palestinians and the Arab world in the age of Netanyahu says the following. The most important reason for the defeat of the Palestinian national state building project has been Israel's settlements in the West Bank and East Jerusalem, which have strongly promoted been strongly promoted by Netanyahu since 2009. The preclusion of any serious future withdrawal from the West Bank was the reason why the Likud party put the settlement project on steroids after its 1977 election victory. The Likud the Likud's settlement drive was designed to keep the West Bank under permanent Israel con Israeli control and had both political and strategic dimensions. The Israelis, the government never wanted peace and it's clear from their actions. Also, with regards to the two-state solutions, none of the two-state solutions were truly two-state solutions. It was always a subjugated Palestinian people, always. As Edward Said famously said, that it was an instrument of Palestinian surrender, a Palestinian Versailles. The Palestinians have effect, in effect discounted the unilateral and international acknowledged claim to the West Bank and Gaza. And this, he was referring to the famous Oslo Accords that was basically, you know, 
famously, they thought this was a great achievement from the Israelis, but in actual fact, it was just further subjugating the Palestinian people and they had to basically surrender most of their land that belonged to them. So the point here is, if you want peace, you want justice, don't have apartheid. It has to be dismantled, this system. If you want peace, if you want justice, stop killing innocent Palestinians, Muslims and Christians, as we said, and you didn't answer this, you didn't condemn this either, which is quite telling the five equivalent of October the 7th that happened before October the 7th from 2008 to 2020. Also, what you need to have is the, 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 the non-genocidal approach to this issue, because again, you didn't answer any of my questions concerning the statements, you called it rhetoric. Really, if any politician, Western politician in the world, made these statements, they would not be described as rhetoric. In actual fact, I would say, how dare you even call them rhetoric? It's a shame that you do that. Also, um, the actions on the ground with 50% of the aerial bombs being dumb bombs, dumb bombs, according to US intelligence agencies, and even Biden, Genocide Joe, he said that basically, it's indiscriminate killing, the, the, the ally of Israel. So the point is, very, very quickly, I, Karen Armstrong says something very interesting. She's a, she's a popular historian. She says the Muslims create a system of governance where Muslims, Jews and Christians live peacefully for the first time. If you want to look at this from a historical perspective, there's actually no other time in history where Jews, Christians and Muslims live peacefully other than under the Islamic civilization. That's another topic, but it's something for you to think about, something for us to explore, what kind of values were in place, what kind of system was in place in order for, th for that to happen. Because under secularism, under Zionism, under all of these isms, they have actually failed the Palestinians and they have failed the Jewish people as well. And, what, and the Jewish people and, and the Palestinians and the Christians and others, they flourished because of an alternative worldview. And that's something we should explore. We should judge things on their merit, by the fruits we should know them. And peace and justice lived uh, under the Islamic rule in that period. Now, what can we derive? How can we can make that contemporary and apply in our context as another discussion for another debate, but it's something that I want to plant in your heart and mind in order for you to explore further, because Zionism is a, is, a, is a failed project. What we see today is actually the destruction of Zionism. The apartheid regime is going to be annihilated in, in our lifetime, just like South Africa. It happened in South Africa. And we know you can't have peace and justice with apartheid. 65 laws that discriminate against Arab Israelis and Palestinians, something that you didn't even talk about either. That's why I think I was justified to say in the beginning, you're either racist or ignorant. And on that, I want to thank both you gentlemen for coming in today. Mark, Hamza, thank you. And I think there's a lot for us to unpack moving forward. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. And that does it for another week. We'd love for you to join the conversation by sharing the link to today's programme to help us grow our audience across all our social media platforms. I'd like to once again thank our special guest, Dr. Mark Humphreys and Hamza Tortsis. In the meantime, the conversation will be back next week with more investigations and analysis. I'm Sean Murray. Bye for now.